somebody is to look at my calendar without knowing who I am, they'd be like, what is going on with this person? Because I have all of these trial dates on here on my calendar as if like I was going to them, but it's just making notes. So I know when things are going to be coming up and when to be looking for the coverage information and, and all that. And I had Brian Walsh hearing uh, on here for the uh, the 23rd, which is uh, yesterday as of this airing. Uh, but turns out the Brian Walsh hearing has been punted down the road a little bit amid some new DNA evidence into November. Uh, Brian Walsh, of course, the man who is accused of murdering his wife, Anna Walsh, on New Year's. Um, and there's some new information that they are digging up as he awaits his day in court. The uh, decision came after attorneys on both sides anticipated pivotal DNA results from several items, including... <laughs> this is just like never a good list of things if it's in front of you and it's involving your wife and she's dead and they're looking for DNA. A hacksaw... That was mm. recently dispatched to an independent lab for DNA analysis. The uh, awaited results are predicted to emerge in about two weeks as disclosed in the latest court filing in Norfolk, Massachusetts Superior Court. Uh, Anna Walsh's haunting disappearance on New Year's Day. It has left a community on edge, especially since her body remains have been undiscovered. So she's out there somewhere and I am not trying to be crude in any way, shape or form, but with what we understand about what Brian Walsh did, she's likely in pieces. Uh, oh, and, dear. And I don't know that we're ever truly going to find a fully intact Anna Walsh, especially if she was uh, dumped at the dump, literally. Um, in a bid to find some closure, a significant tip from the uh, community directed a heavy law enforcement response conspiring in the Massachusetts State Police Police and a, a dense woodland area in Peabody, Massachusetts. The location holds significance as it is in close proximity to the transfer station where other integral evidence uh, building the murder case against Brian, notably the hacksaw and the blood-streaked rug, was unearthed. In a public statement from Norfolk County District Attorney's Office, David Traub, spokesman for the DA's office, disclosed the two persons in the Peabody community unconnected to the prosecution of Brian Walsh contacted police investigators with their belief that an area of that community may be of investigative interest in that matter. Yet, the search has unfortunately come up empty with no substantial leads uncovered. The backdrop to this murder allegation, which Brian Walsh has categorically denied, intersects with his federal art fraud case, resulting in some procedural delays, having been convicted of selling counterfeit Andy Warhol paintings on eBay, Brian was serving house arrest at their Cohasset residence during Anna's disappearance. As per court documents, Brian believed that Anna, a high-ranking real estate executive in Washington, D.C., was having an extramarital affair. This allegation, combined with Brian's deliberate delays in his art fraud sentencing, is purported to have heightened tensions in their marriage. Further allegations that now plague Brian as well. He's also being tried for allegedly manipulating his father's will, and most gruesomely for purportedly battering his wife to death on New Year's Day. Court documents state that Brian had been suspicious of Anna and had been monitoring the Instagram account of one of her male acquaintances from Washington, D.C. These suspicions led Brian to enlist a private investigator a shadow, uh, to shadow Anna in D.C., followed by multiple divorce-related Google searches. The content of these searches, some were chillingly morbid, and we've gone over them before, have raised several eyebrows uh, and is under very close scrutiny by legal experts. Despite the plethora of charges, Brian Walsh stands firm in his plea of not guilty on all counts. His attorney, Tracy Miner, remains tight-lipped, asserting that she plans to contest the allegations rigorously in court rather than in the court of public opinion. In an earlier statement this April, she emphasized it is not evidence. It will be up to the prosecution to prove those allegations beyond a reasonable doubt. The lack of physical body is certainly going to be a barrier for prosecutors. High-profile Massachusetts criminal defense attorney Isis Iten has openly questioned the robustness of the evidence uh, in what is in this case. Nate uh, Amidala, another prominent Massachusetts criminal defense attorney not associated with the case, echoed the sentiment as well. Speaking to Fox News Digital, he asserted, this is a pure circumstantial case. There's no direct evidence because nobody saw her being killed. And there's no physical body. And there's really no physical evidence other than some blood and some... Where the, where the fuck planet are these people on? I know they're attorneys, 
But at the same point, where what planet are you living on? And, and if you're not the attorney yeah. for this person, why are you saying these things out loud? Because it makes you look like an idiot. My question is, OK, there's no there's really no physical evidence other than some blood. OK, wait a minute. You and I are sitting here. We're doing this podcast. Is your blood anywhere that it shouldn't be? No, mine isn't. So if if your blood has been spilled somewhere, how did it get there? There was blood well, in the basement. Did it get there because somebody took a hacksaw to you? That's a problem. There was blood in the basement of the house. There was uh, there was weapon. There was I believe it was a hammer in the basement of the house, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly, that had blood on it. There's no Again, physical that's evidence. A problem. I, I mean, did they just find some attorney that has no clue what the hell case this is, and then get a comment? That's what it looks like. If I were this attorney, I'd be like, uh, can I go take that back because I have more context on this case? Um, I, yeah. I get it if you're the defense attorney for like Brian Koberger or the defense attorney for this guy, for for Walsh. You'd be saying that sort of shit. But just like, hey, can you comment on this case? You have nothing to do with it? Yeah, let me say some purely insane things. Is it circumstantial? To a certain extent, but it doesn't mean anything anymore if you don't have a freaking body. I mean, the man well, and his and- Google searches were damning enough. Well, the Google searches, the person is missing and a DNA match. So, yeah, you've got a problem and you should not be finding any organic material on a hacksaw unless, you know, if you can prove maybe it was for a deer. But if it's coming out to be human DNA on a hacksaw, that's a problem because in our society, we should not be sawing up people we know. Should not be sawing up people, just strangers, Stacy. Only strangers. Am I, well, okay, <laughs> just am I wrong? Though? Strangers I mean, and bad people. Yes. No, you're not wrong. I, yeah, I mean, any of my tools that I have out in the garage, if there's any organic material on them, it's not from somebody who's missing. No, no, it's uh, it's from somebody who. Uh, is not missing because nobody knew who they were and well, nobody has that. claimed their body. <laughs> um, but I mean, it, with this, I mean, plus how about the Home Depot video? How about that nice New Year's Day shopping trip to right? basically get material to hide a body with? I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's just like the most ridiculous things on that shopping list. His his search engine history is going to, that's going to screw him more than anything. And I'm sure he's not, I mean, he's not the most uh, crafty criminal here. His DNA is going to be all over this shit. I can mm-hmm. almost guarantee it. Uh, so was it a crime of passion? Was it planned? I, I, I doubt it was planned. Just seeing the uh, the harsh and quick manner in which all this seemed to be an attempted cover up, which was done extremely poorly. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, if you're if you're caught at Home Depot buying a whole bunch of stuff to to help hide a body, you know, 20, 30 years ago, they might have a witness that, you know, the cashier said, yeah, he bought a whole bunch of this stuff. Well, now we have video surveillance. Now we have ways of of looking at these things. And, and DNA, you're going to get caught committing a crime. And I don't think the physical body needs to be present to, to you know, charge somebody with a crime these days. It doesn't. I just hope that for the sake of, of the family, of, of these kids that uh, no longer have their mom and their dad, uh, that... They find the body, at least some semblance of it to to bury. And I know it's not going to bring mom back, but maybe uh, it can bring them a a little bit of peace as they will struggle with this for the rest of their lives. You're locked into the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.